economy. Economic side, the economy. You can see the bullet train, you can see what's happening in Tianjin and uh, other places, connecting all the towns, uh, etc., reducing delays. And then also you have the getting people out of poverty, the social uh, protection. So all these, these are the kinds of uh, everyday uh, aspects of life that we Mauritius, we think about. So uh, we want to know how China's coping with it. There will be a lot of uh, uh, investment will be done by the Chinese government in Pakistan to improve the economy of Pakistan and their security situations. This is very interesting, not for not only for Ukrainians and for, for for all the world. They try to understand the experience of China, how to build successful economy. And it has already bringing a lot of change in Pakistan and in Pakistan's economy as well. And there is a bilateral benefit, not for, only for China, for the countries where China is going to invest. So it's a very interesting and useful initiative, not only for China, for other countries, I mean for Eurasia in general. I try to summarize the One Belt, One Road initiative in this way that uh, China has developed, they have the capability to develop, and they are saying we want the whole world to come along with us. We want to share our benefits and our develop, uh, development ideals with the rest of the world. China wants to have good relations with all countries. This is a very good example of co coexistence. So it's kind of a, a convergent point where you have all these uh, cultures present and living uh, uh, next to each other in harmony. I recently did a story in my paper which I'm saying China is now the 73rd tribe of Zambia, meaning Zambians have now accepted China as one of their own brothers and sisters because of the many development programs that they are doing in Zambia. Roads, hospitals and schools, and they are trading. So they do appreciate Chinese as one of their own.